do a mic check. <coughs> testing one, two, three. And move that baby over a little bit. Let's do a mic check. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Good to see you all. Good to be with you all this evening. <coughs> I'm going to give Cindy here a minute to get in and tell me she's set up and ready to record. Whew. Well, I guess y'all going to have a big fourth tomorrow. Celebrate your wonderful independence. Uh, I'd like to say that I want to encourage you to look forward to the independence that the Messiah will give us all if we turn to Him. Amen. Amen. Got a message for you tonight. We're going to be in Genesis 3 and Matthew 24 and Revelation all over the place. But I want to talk to you about it and encourage you and at the same time let you know that that we do have some, we've got some awesome days ahead, but they're, they're not very pretty, okay? But at the same time, I myself find myself in the position that, uh, that he is in the molding and the making uh, business right now. And uh, we ourselves have got to be pliable. He's got to be the potter and we got to be the clay. And, uh, you know, one of the things we've got to learn is that we're not, we're not the creator, that we're humans. And that uh, we're going to do good things, we're going to do bad things. We're going to see bad things, we're going to see good things. But all in all, we've got to realize, know, recognize, understand, and never forget that He is the Creator, the Holy One of Israel, and things are in His hands and in His control. Amen. Let us pray for a minute. Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, we bow before you this afternoon, or this, this night, <coughs> giving you glory, <coughs> giving you honor, giving you praise. Knowing that all things were made by you and for you, and without you nothing was made. Yahweh, we know and understand that the times and the seasons we're living in, that, that they're, not, they're not abundantly beautiful in terms of what's going to happen to the world or the wicked. So, Father, I pray right now that I, I pray again, as I have all day and have been, that I would not be of the world or be wicked, but that my mind would be the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach, and my feet steps would be girded with truth and the preparation of the gospel of peace and of prophecy and understanding toward a lost and dying world. That I would not be afraid to speak the truth, nor would I be afraid to walk in the truth, no matter the cost. And Yahweh, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt the world is offering everything it can to distract to make of no effect and to destroy the remnant of you and those of us that are striving to serve you we are under the gun we ask you to give us a little rest a little peace and a, and a whole lot of refreshing <clears throat> that we may endure to the end because those that endure to the end they're the same that shall be saved <clears throat> give us the power the wherewithal the understanding and the knowledge to preach this gospel of the kingdom as a witness on all nations and then let your end come we don't know the day, the hour. Yeshua don't even know it, nor the angels, but you know it. But we can tell that things are progressively moving toward the time of Jacob's trouble. So let us hunker down and let us remind ourselves that it is not us that lives, nor can it be, but Messiah that lives through us if we want to be victorious. In the mighty name of Yeshua, bless your people. Amen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I'll have to be clear to throat tonight, but that's okay. I'm going to talk to you in Genesis for a minute, <clears throat> and then we're going to talk a little while, and I'll be Matthew 24 in some several different places, but <clears throat> I'm going to try to bring an explanation tonight. <clears throat> the best of my ability with the Holy Spirit's help and the word that is the word of Yahweh bring an explanation of where we are specifically at I'm not a scholar nor a prophet but I am a person that desires to understand the word 
Oh, music's going on? I didn't know I was praying. I am one that desires to understand the word. And to understand the calling that he has upon my life. And we all have responsibility as individuals to make sure of our calling and election and not let it fade away and not let anything distract us from it but to remain steadfast and unmovable in him okay now <clears throat> there will be times in the future that you will fall and I will fall but the thing about it is it cannot be a repetitive same thing over and over fall and him be pleased with us take it from somebody that knows okay but at the same time before I begin this message listen to me and listen to me clearly that if if somebody wrongs you you've got to forgive them this is a key thing in the end time okay you see because he said because iniquity shall abound the love of many will wax cold okay now people are going to wrong you people are going to wrong me we're going to wrong others but he said unless you forgive then your heavenly father Yahweh will not be able to forgive you what you do wrong now some people's sins may seem bigger than others but I'm going to tell you something you let Yahweh be the judge of the weight and the depth of that sin but you go ahead and forgive them because if you don't then anger and bitterness and all those things will take root in you and you'll become unfruitful and, and ineffective for the kingdom. Okay? So I wanted to get that out there and let you know that, that that's, that's one of the key things and the key attributes of making it to the end. And like I told you, to him that overcometh and endure it to the end, the same shall be saved. That's the words of the Messiah. That's not something I've made up. But in Genesis 3, just for a few minutes... <clears throat> Genesis 3 and verse 22. Genesis 3, verse 22. And Yahweh said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever and therefore Yahweh sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life now let's go back and Yahweh said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And the very next step would have been for that man to put forth his hand, to take of the tree of life, and eat forever. Now, that being said, <clears throat> I'm going to begin to talk to you for a little bit tonight. You see, the thing about it that mankind does not want to realize, know and understand, is that they have not, as human beings, they have not taken of the tree of life. They do, however, they do, however, understand both good and evil. Or they wouldn't do both. Okay? Okay, but at the same time, there's a group of people on this globe that believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that they somehow or another have the knowledge that they're going to live forever. I'm talking about apart from Yeshua. They, they think that by way of Satan that they're going to win and live forever. But the fact is they won't. The fact is they will die and they will burn in the pits of hell forever. The fact is, and I'll say this plainly tonight, the fact is that if you and I don't remain hooked up to him and we, and we lean to our own self, and we let trials and tribulations get us down and we turn away from him and we don't come back, we neither will live forever in the kingdom. 
you see. But with that being said, think about it. Think about it for a minute. They were about to put their hand and take up the tree of life and eat for and, and just live forever. Live forever. But Yahweh put a stop to it, didn't he? And the reason I read that verse to you, and the reason I want to explain to you tonight that see there is a way that you have eternal life, okay? And that way is through Yeshua. Okay? And Yeshua is the Word, the living Word. John the beginning was the Word, okay? Now that Word don't only include the book of Acts, but it includes from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21 and whatever books they took out. It includes it all, okay? But at night, <clears throat> for instance, let me, before I get started here, for instance, this group of people that believe that they know better than the Creator, that believe that they can just do whatever they want to do, have they have they come up with the technology to stop a tornado yet? No, and they never will. Have they come up with the technology to stop earthquakes? No, and they never will. Have they come up with the technology to live forever? No, and they never will. But they have they have uh, obtained, and they do retain, a lot of knowledge and capability to bring about destruction. But part of that is that Yahweh has allowed it for his own judgment and righteousness. But what about, what about it? What about it, ladies and gentlemen? Where are we at and where are we headed? Well, all around us, you know, all around us, we, we, it seems that the world just filled with, with all kind of problems and devastation. Well, the question I have for you is, can they, can they be solved by the human race? No. No, they can't. Again, I tell you, the earthquakes, the, you know, devastating loss with them. And you, you, don't, you don't remember the Japan earthquake? And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to get newsworthy here, but yeah, it killed a bunch of folks. And then also, remember that tornado? Where was it at? Uh, Joplin, Joplin, Missouri. Most deadly tornado since '47. And if and if natural disasters are not enough, I want you to look at the housing crisis. I want you to look at the health crisis. I want you to look at the divorce rate. The adulterous rate. I want you to look at the drugs, the drunkenness, you name it. I want you to look at it. And it's like never before in history. The thievery, the rape, it never ends. And the very financial meltdown is part of part of the Creator's plan. Although wicked people are doing it, it's part of the Creator's plan. Okay? For instance, look at all these look at all these go to college graduates and they're hopefully working at McDonald's. So what about 2012? And what about the predictions of people? Well, let's just talk about it for a few minutes. In April 2012, Global Public Affairs found nearly 15% of people worldwide believe the world will end during their lifetime. And a staggering 10% are literally hanging on to the mind calendar to believe that guess what? That guess what? that the world's going to end the end of this year, okay? Well, will it end in 2012? Well, well, well let's, let's look at the Word. Let's talk about it for a little bit, and let's see based on the Word what has got to happen before it can.